today we are going to perform aldol condensation we are going to use 2 moles of benzaldehyde and acetone to give a conjugated product we will use 2.5 molar sodium hydroxide as a base and ethanol as a solvent before we start the reaction uh, we need to prepare all the necessary glassware we're going to have three graduated cylinder one for sodium hydroxide one for ethanol and one for ethyl acetate later on we will have two aluminium flask we will label it as a and b now as you do the experiment you need to write everything in your notebook so first we will take ethanol you are required to take 4 ml however you don't need to take exact 4 but whatever amount you take you need to write down in your notebook And then I'm going to take sodium hydroxide that also is required to take 4 ml but even if you take more that's fine uh, but you need to write the exact amount you take in your notebook. So in this case I'm taking 4.30 ml. I add ethanol and sodium hydroxide both in aluminium flask A. And I keep the flask on the side, which has been labeled A. Now in flask B, I'm going to add benzaldehyde. First, I am transferring in a small vial and then I will take 2 ml of benzaldehyde. I am using 1 ml syringe. So, if it is 1 ml syringe, it means I need to take 2 times. So, every time I am taking the amount, I am recording it means I'm observing it and I will record in my notebook. So once I do benzaldehyde, what's the other thing I need? I will need acetone and I will need another syringe and just like previously I will transfer some of the acetone in a beaker and I will take 1 ml of acetone. And we will record the exact amount. So this time I have 0 0.95 ml. And I will transfer in aluminium flask B. Now my flask B has benzaldehyde and acetone. I will slowly add in a portion of A into B. I would say I will add half of it. As soon as I will add solution of A into B, I will observe there is a color change. That color change is, I, I, I think is because of uh, a new product is forming. Our product is highly conjugated. So that's why you see a color change. I will be keep on swirling and I will also observe whether 
I feel any heat or not. So at this point, I will be writing all the observation in my notebook. Once I do this, I will add remaining of A into B and I will swirl it for at least 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, as I swirling, you can notice I am also checking uh, whether reaction is exothermic or not, whether any heat is producing or not in the reaction. So now I have to swirl the flask for additional time and you, you can see that after ev every time I swirl I am also checking whether reaction is, is whether the flask is hot or not because at one point you will notice that there will not be any more heat in the flask and a lot of solid will form. So that will indicate that my reaction has been completed. So till that time I will be swirling the flask. So this takes around 5 to 10 minutes. So if you get tired uh, of swirling, you can write down in your notebook uh, all your observations. And as I'm mixing, more and more solid is forming. Well, that's a good sign. It means reaction is going in a forward direction. Now you can think about it, why the product is solid why the product is not liquid think about it this might be a good question for the final exam that why my product is solid and is precipitating out the second good question could be why my product is yellow in color because when i took both starting materials they were all colorless liquid however my product is kind of you know bright bright or it, it's yellowish so these are the very two good questions one why there is a color change number two why my product is precipitating out I will be sharing all my observation with you all. I'm, I'm still checking whether, you know, I'm holding the, I'm swirling and holding the flask and checking whether heat is generating or not. So you can see that lot of solid has formed and that's a good thing. That's what we wanted to achieve. Now once you have nice solid, we will do the filtration uh, step. 
さ。